Colonel Peters, do you think it was appropriate for the president to invite the Taliban, who obviously the people who gave safe haven to al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden, to plan the 9-11 attacks to Camp David, especially, you know, the, the week of running into 9-11 anniversary? No, in, indeed, it was one of the most repulsive ideas ever raised by an American president. To, to bring the Taliban, to legitimize them, to elevate and dignify them, by bringing them to Camp David, or, or to even to the Department of Agriculture, for that matter, to any federal building, to bring them to this country, um, is absolute madness. Can anyone, can any viewer imagine in the, in the num months, the days, the months, the, even the years after 9-11, having a president invite the Taliban to Camp David for the express purpose of cutting a backroom deal um, and essentially handing them Afghanistan. The, what's interesting, I think, is, you know, there have been uh, peace processes uh, which have been worked out in Camp David in the past, but really what the U.S. is doing here, though no one is really saying this directly, is that they're trying to negotiate basically withdrawal all of American forces from Afghanistan. It's not a peace deal for Afghanistan. There's no terms about the war, the violence by the Taliban ending. The Afghan government isn't even directly involved in these talks. Yeah, and there are good reasons, and I've argued some of them, to withdraw troops from Afghanistan. But I just feel that if we're going to call it quits, if we're going to say, hey, we gave it our best shot, hasn't worked, the Afghans haven't stood up and fought for their own country, uh, where it's time to go, we should do it openly and not do it behind the backs of our clients. Uh, it just, the entire thing stinks. And the hold up with the Taliban apparently has been that they want us to go even faster than we're willing to go. And even were they to agree to a treaty that, that seemed on the surface to make some sort of sense, they wouldn't honor it. You gotta understand, for the Taliban, uh, this is a jihad. For them, at least, it is a religious war. And they do not have to honor promises made to the enemy, to the unbeliever, etc. So back to your original point, though, Anderson, yes, we've had secret negotiations w with hostile forces before, but not with terrorists who've killed thousands of Americans and maimed tens of thousands of Americans. You, you, you don't make, uh, cobras don't make good pets and terrorists are not good negotiating partners. It is one of the, you know, one of the things the president has said is, look, sometimes you do have to, you know, make deals with, with bad actors or, or unsavory characters, uh, which is uh, certainly a, a fair point. Um, I guess I'm just not clear on exactly what the deal they're going for really is. Because, I mean, if, you know, the Taliban is still doing suicide attacks. Do you believe the president, when he said the reason for calling off the talks uh, was the, the, the killing of a U.S. service member? I don't think at this point any of us can get inside President Trump's head. It may have been, it may have been the pushback he was getting from uh, Vice President Pence and John Bolton and others. Um, you just don't know with this guy. But again, I have to stress that, yes, you have to make deals with bad people sometimes in life, us in the life of nations, but not with terrorists. It doesn't work. Not with the people who are the arch supporters, not the executors, but the arch supporters of 9-11. And the timing, I mean, how could it have possibly been worse? So I'm, there, I have so many reservations and regrets about our engagement in Afghanistan, but dealing with the Taliban is not the right way to get out. And I think what the Trump administration wants isn't really a peace deal. They want a fig leaf. A, a fig leaf to get, to get U.S. troops out. Yeah, an excuse, oh, we cut a deal, and then the Taliban didn't honor, honor it, but we made a deal. And th this deal-maker-in-chief, it's frightening that he thinks he can get the best Kim Jong-un or the Taliban or, or Vladimir Putin or President Xi. Anderson, none of his deals have worked out of these major initiatives, not one. And it's, it's not only disappointing. It's frightening. Do you think this is about, for President Trump, this is about President Trump's ego or about politics before the 2020 election, trying to get American troops out before the 2020 election? Because that seems to be the timetable the U.S. has been, been pushing for. And the president wants, you know, something that seems dramatic at Camp David with these, you know, uh, allegedly making some sort of a peace deal, which is really just a withdrawal deal. Everything from Afghanistan to Alabama 
is about Trump's ego. But Trump's ego is also involved in the election. So the answer is all of the above. Uh, President Trump obviously doesn't grasp the principles, uh, the basic principles of national security. His own government can't trust him. The American people can't trust him. And now he's the man who apparently will lead us out of this long, tragic involvement and will leave it in, in an odious manner. Mm. Colonel Peters, I appreciate your time. Thank you.